Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and we are going to make a split in this video. We're getting below the excluder. We've got a high butler over here that we're going to use. Had multiple people ask me if I would do a video on them, so I am going to. They're also going to be one of the vendors at our conference in January, so if you're looking for the best bee deals in the country, we'll see you January 7th and 8th. All right, we need brood, we need bee bread. We also need to make sure that we don't get the queen that's in this hive. I've got a queen up there in that battery. If you'd like to see how we bank those queens, I'm gonna leave a link up here in the top corner and you can watch that video. I don't like to bank queens. It's definitely best to get them in a hive as soon as possible, but that doesn't always work out. Weather, sometimes you end up with too many queens. What a wonderful problem. And this girl right here has done a fantastic job. I've already pulled some supers off of this one. And I've got a couple there on the ground that are also doing really good. So I'm seeing eggs down in here. There's emerging brood. And more emerging brood. This is a frame that I threw in here not too long ago that, as you can see, was a little deformed. I believe it had a little bit of wax moth damage and it got chewed down a little bit, but they're already drawing that out a little bit. So that's great. It's a pretty young comb though. I'd say this comb is no more than three years old. But I'm not seeing what I want. We're gonna lean that up here and just keep on moving around. We're putting a little smoke on top. Try not to put too much smoke down into the colony. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty nice frame right here, a lot of cap brood. We must give frames of bee bread this time of the year though, because without that, our new colony won't grow. I'm not seeing the queen on this one. One of the nice things about the hive butler is it has these slots down in here, so if you're transporting or doing anything with it, your frames aren't falling off and bludgeoning one another. It's also made in the United States, which is really nice. So that's one spot there. I'm going to go ahead and stick this one off to the edge. It also has a vented lid that we can put on. So if robbing starts, we can still give them some air. I definitely wouldn't leave it in the sun though. It just makes sense for anything out of that material. Be like a greenhouse. Goodness, it's so hot right now. I wouldn't even want a jester nuke box out in this heat. Several people have asked about doing a video on those and you know it's one of those things where it can be really helpful to beekeepers at certain stages I think and uh, I really like the fact that it's made in the US that's always a big plus so I'm seeing a lot of young fuzzy bees on this I'm not seeing the queen nice little bit of bees there and you got some dark bees and some light bees this queen's been uh hanging around well she did run around with a couple different types of drones so what i could do is just really set these sit these up in here set them that's funny and then i can put them back in in a later date i'm gonna look at these frames and see if the queen is on the sides of them I have a feeling she's over to this direction. And that's primarily because of the stages of brood that I am seeing. I have been wrong before. All right, so we're getting, again, capped brood. Not seeing the queen though. And still don't see her. down over there. We'll just keep moving. All right, now we're going to look at that adjacent frame over there because sometimes she'll be on it. She gets that daylight and she'll run around to the other side. The queens do not like the daylight. It's a good behavior when you see a queen just going on and laying as you're 
moving the frame around and she's getting exposed to the sunlight. Some queens and bees just run around and that's actually one of the things that we breed for. I mean, look at these bees right here. You don't want to select from colonies but when you're doing this, you're smoking them just lightly. If you smoke them a lot, that's one thing. But these bees are just gently moving along the combs. They're not what's called runny. We don't want runny bees. And we definitely don't want bees that are going to come after us and sting us good. This is a wonderful frame to give a lot of emerging bees, a lot of young bees on this comb. I'm just going to set that down into there. We're just going to, I thought it was, she was over here, but there's probably not a very good chance that she's on this frame. It is possible, but it looks like it's mostly food. She could be on the wall. Sometimes they'll do that, but that's one of the reasons why you don't want runny bees is because runny bees tend to have queens that run to the walls and the lids and the bottom boards. And they're very difficult to find. All right. Well, narrowing it down. Lots of nice eggs on this frame right here. Good cat brood on that next frame over. There she is, wow, I barely saw her. She's right down there in that crease. Quite a dark queen and she has definitely shrank since the last time that I have seen her, but it's that time of the year and bees are slowing down naturally. She's done a very good job for us this season. It hasn't swarmed, so good job for her. And we are gonna place her back into this hive and that frame next door is just solid cap brood. And you gotta leave some from th for this hive. So we are going to do just that. They've got four frames right there. We can take a couple frames from up top, have some bee bread or whatnot. We also have this frame still to grab. We ought to keep in mind all the foragers that are on these frames are going to come back. This one has some capped brood, also has some larvae. I think we're just going to shake this one. Whoops, just about got stung there. Try to keep the brood together. This does not have brood on it, so we'll keep that in its place. And now, we've got ourselves a good bit of bees right here. Got a good frame of food and some bee bread on this one right here. So we are going to throw that in here because most of these frames do not have much in the way of food. We are going to feed this colony, this new split, but there's nothing like having some of the real stuff in there too. So a combination. That's really nice. Those fit in there. It's got extra space so they don't have to be really close. And now if I want to keep robbing down because I see a couple bees flying around, kind of throw that lid on there like that. I'm gonna go grab some combs. Combs are like gold. And some of these, this one I'm dropping right here, I believe is at least six or seven years old. People ask us all the time how long we keep them, usually around a decade. Some of them we're keeping a little bit less these days just because we're selling more nukes and more singles and so that's bringing the, our age down and we're not growing our operation. We actually have extra combs this year, which is awesome by the way. I hope you all get to experience that soon. I'm going to have a video before too long showing you how we get extra combs in times of the year where bees naturally don't want to do it as much. And we're working on that right now actually as soon as this video is over. So stay tuned for that one. But extra combs are so valuable. Don't get rid of them unless you absolutely know that you should. 
Now, there's a few things that can affect your cones, but that's that's a topic for another video. Let's get back to the split. So you can see we still have some frames with bees in it. We have at least three frames of brood over here. We have a frame of food. We have this second deep box, which was above the excluder, which had bee bread and other resources and lots of bees. And there's a pretty good bit of bees clustering out here. So this colony has plenty of bee power. It has plenty of resources. It is going to cut it back a little bit, but it's going to have plenty of time to recover. It's early July, so we have this month, we have August. The fall flow starts usually late August, early September. So our goal with this colony now is to feed it and to keep it in good mm -hmm. shape and treat it as well so they can capitalize on that real honey and pollen in September and make a good winter cluster. And that's our goal with this colony, but it's also good that they have made a wonderful little split right here. And it is going to be excellent because that not only is a good bit of bees right there, that's a lot of brood. And we have a brand new queen. Now she was laying in a three frame nuke not too long ago, so she should do really nice. Let me throw this back together. Get a little bit of robbing going on. See all these bees right here? Those are robbers. And let me tell you, after they, those are the first round, the next round will be much bigger. You gotta be pretty quick. My least favorite characteristic of the honeybee is robbing. But it also is what makes them such good honey producers. It's not really ill intent as much as it is programming, productivity, go get resources, go get resources, go get resources. And that's why they are the greatest insect when it comes to producing food for man and one of the best pollinators because of their sheer mass and colony sizes because they do, just don't stop it. Okay, this is enough. They just keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, let's set up another box for this. Now for the easy part and the fun part, we've made sure that we didn't get the queen in the last colony. Now we just need to transfer these bees over. It's a warm time of the year. We definitely don't have to worry about the bees getting too cool. And we have plenty of room in this hive butler. Or why don't you get a shot of this? And you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five more spots in here. I just spaced them out because it makes it even easier for me to grab it. And just pull them right on out. And what we want to do is this one has a little bit of larvae in it. So we are going to place that right there. That's going to be in the center. And we are just going to keep going from one to the next. This one's got emerging brood. So we're going to stick this one over here towards this extra comb. We got two extra combs in here. When we start feeding them with that frame feeder, which we will do after the video, I'm going to fill that all the way up with thin one-to-one -one syrup. Whenever you introduce a queen, if there's not a honey flow going, I recommend that you feed them some one-to-one -one syrup. It really helps them accept the queens better. It gives them something to do, especially during a dearth period like we're in right now. You, they just need something to do and, and food really helps them out. This one has emerging brood. So we are gonna have that one right in here. All right. And this one is I think the food, yeah, this is the food frame. So this one's going to go to the edge. And if I can get these bees out of the way, there's quite a few on the top bar here. I'm going to yank this last one out. Nice capped brood frame. Very nice. And so we're just going to 
shrink that in and just this colony's got a lot of young bees on the way. That colony, we took a lot of young bees from it. However, they've already accepted their queen, so there's no issues there. And we did leave her some capped brood and some larvae, so there's still a balance of pheromones. But this queen right here, she needs a lot of young bees, and that's exactly all she's going to get. All the forager bees are going to drift on back, and she's going to have nothing but a bunch of young bees who are just excited to have a queen. You can see there's a bunch of bees flying out here, and here she is in this cage. I don't know if you probably can't see her very good, but she's down in there. It's one of our queens, and she actually has a green dot. I have misplaced my white markers. It's a yearly event. I thought two would be enough. And we are just going to place her down in there and get her down close to the brood. And then they, as they chew through candy, they will be able to get their queen. But before that happens, this evening I've got to get some sugar syrup down into here. And I miscalculated. I did not get another frame. I'll grab one in a minute. But we're going to put one more frame right here, then we're going to feed them, and that's going to be our split. And we know that queen's great because we already had her in a three-frame nuke. Between the feeding, young bees, and this queen is a proven queen from one of our mating nukes. She had a full brood cycle to be able to show us her merits, and this is going to work. 99.9% .9 chance this is going to work because all the factors are working together. And we're going to have a wonderful, nice colony here. I love it. Hi, Butler. It's pretty nice. Um, I just wanted to try it out using it with bees, and I really like the space that it has in between each frame. That is nice. Also, one of the things that I noticed and they mentioned is that it's deeper than a box. So if you have a swarm situation, let me get these. Yeah, I got some of them. If you have a swarm situation, there's enough room down in here. If there's a swarm cell at the bottom, it's not going to crush your swarm cell which is something that we use on all of our mating nukes, is we make them a little bit deeper, and that way if there's a cell hanging down three quarters of an inch to an inch, it's not gonna damage that swarm cell. But anyways, I just wanted to try that out. I might use it in the future um, to pull some honey, but uh, a lot of people ask for a review, so here it is. And thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.